So here I've got the mix, and we're not, we're not quite at trace yet, but I'm going to mix it until it reaches trace, and then it'll, it'll continue to thicken from there, and as it thickens, it'll also um, warm, and that's because of the sp sp saponification reaction that's going on, but at the same time, it'll, it'll start to cool down a little bit, but then it'll cross a, a threshold, and it's at that threshold that your saponification has almost completed. Um, and then from there, it'll get thick, then it'll go back to a very, very thin consistency, what I call applesauce, um, and it'll do a few other things, and then a uh, short time after that, it will then officially become soap. So hang with us with this process, it's going to be loud, <clears throat> might, uh, might be a little bit messy, but um, at the end, we're going to come out with a great product here. All right, at this point, we've hit a really light trace. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we've got some we've got some clay here, and we we like the things that the clay brings to the uh, the party, with the the benefits and the, the the look and feel that it brings to the soap. Um, so at this point, we're going to add that, get that incorporated. Um, 
<clears throat> realistically you can add it as is or some people like to put a little bit of water into the clay to pre-mix it um, because obviously once the clay goes in it will start to absorb water from your batter and that will change the consistency you 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 will have to play around with the water amount <clears throat> um, of your lye mixture um, so that way you have a soap batter that is something that you are comfortable working with we've done um, we've done this recipe hundreds of times and so we're, we're comfortable with with how the recipe turns out with the clay and we're comfortable with working with the batter in that consistency so we're not going to add any water here we're just going to put it in mix it in and, and just go forward One of the great things about if you were to add water to the clay, you will alleviate the, the minor issue that we had here. Clay obviously likes to float on the top of the batter. Um, so usually if I'm not adding water to it, I like to create a little vortex with the soap batter. So that way I'll pour into that vor uh, vortex and it will then take it down to where everything's being mixed on the bottom and we'll be good to go. But <clears throat> a lot of times it will float a little bit so you have to play around with it. But if you were to add a little bit of water to it, you're, you're not going to have that problem. It's just going to go right into the batter and get mixed up from the get-go. As you can see, it's starting to thicken up quite nicely. We've got we've got a long ways to go. Or actually, it's not really a long ways, but we've got we've got more to do. So. And the, your batter temperature is pretty pretty crucial because you're, you are going to have to hit at least somewhere around 180, 185 for this pontification to actually take place in front of you. If you really don't hit that number, then you're not really accelerating this pontification process, and you're going to be wind up you're going to wind up doing a cold process batch, which is nothing wrong with it. But we're we're trying to do something a little bit faster. Um, <clears throat> so everything. Everything comes down to your oil temperatures and, and your lie your lie temperature. Um, <laughs> our oil temperature has to has to change from season to season. Winter time we have to in increase our oil temperature just because the ambient temperature in the air is cooler and it cools everything down. Um, and in the summertime we can go a little bit lower, but there's a point uh, that you really can't go below. Um, because then your your soap batter mix doesn't reach t the temperature that it needs in order to um, saponify more quickly. All right, as you can see, we are definitely getting much much thicker. This is um, what I like to call junior chef mashed potatoes. It's, you know, where you make mashed potatoes and you put a little too much liquid into it, and it's a little too runny. Um, it's actually going to get a little bit thicker than that before before we're finished, and then it'll thin out again, and then it'll reverse the process and become thick again. And, it, and the, that last um, thickening will be when it's actually soaked. <laughs> One thing to point out with the 
stick blender, hot process method, hot process, process method, whatever you want to call it. It goes by 12 different names. Um, you are obviously agitating to facilitate the saponification process. Um, and he definitely plays a role into that. And what we have found is the higher your heat temperature is from your oil and your lye water, the more quickly things will happen as far as saponifying, but it will also lead to more volatility um, in your soap batter. <coughs> we call that um, volcanoing, and you'll see that here in the process shortly. Um, you know, your, your soap battery essentially boils and it rises up and there's a lot of volume increase because of the air that is trying to escape. And you have to rectify that. You have to deal with it. You have to be looking for it because if you're not looking for it and you're not paying attention, you are going to have a, a spillover. <coughs> you are going to have lye soap batter all over the place. Um, everybody's done it before. Um, more than likely any, any soaper that says otherwise may not be telling you the truth, but maybe, maybe, maybe their skill set's better than mine, you know, no big deal. But we've done this, um, we've done this a lot of times, and so we know what to expect, <clears throat> and we know when to expect it, and so when you're paying attention and you're, you're doing your stirring at that point, then the volatility is easy to hand, ease, more easily to handle, um, more easy, easier to handle. Um, but another way to control that, uh, to reduce the amount of volatility, is to lower the the oil temperature. And at least that's what we found in our experience. You know, your mileage may vary. I'm just showing you how we do it, what we've experienced, and how we handle it. Again, we're very familiar with this process. Some of you may be saying, wow, this guy's got this blender tilted in an angle and the batter is coming up on the top. Yeah, you're right. You know what? It may not necessarily be the, the, the safest thing, but you have to remember I am in an environment where there's no children. There's nothing that um, can be soiled, nothing that can be ruined. Um, so <clears throat> we've done this a lot of times. It doesn't mean it can't happen, but we know how it... it, it um, we know how the batter responds and so we're able to do some things because we're more careful with the process but at the same time we are still taking um, every precaution possible. So it's thick, much 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 thicker now. Um, it'll thicken up slightly a little bit more and then um, then it'll, it'll go real thin. We call that applesauce because at that point <clears throat> it'll look like applesauce. It'll change colors a little bit It'll be much, much uh, thinner, and it'll have like uh, little bumps, little, little, almost like little applesauce, applesauce chunks into it. Uh, it's at this point that I've reduced the speed down to let the batter actually get a little bit hotter, and we're in the final stages of the thickness, of the first thickness, um, and then it'll, it'll get thin. applesauce stage right now. You see it's starting to get much thinner and it's starting to loosen up. 
it goes right in the surface and then you'll see it start to roll over. So this is what we call the applesauce stage because well, it looks it looks like applesauce to me. I reduce my speed. Get everything stirred up. This is where your fun really starts because this is where things will start to volcano um, here shortly. We'll, we'll mix, continue to mix everything at a much lower speed, not to cause too much agitation um, because really at that point you uh, will be throwing air into the mix at an alarming rate and it will bubble and splatter and pop. <laughs> Our first volcano will be coming up shortly. Um, probably usually occurs by the time I get the the stick portion of the blender uh, cleaned, halfway cleaned, almost clean. All right, I I stopped it a little bit early today since I was filming just because I didn't want to. It'd be that one time, that one time that something messes up. <clears throat> But you can see it's starting to rise a little bit. Um, you may or may not be able to tell. But yeah, it's coming up. You can see it's starting to uh, aerate. But I'm going to uh, we'll go ahead and stir to knock it down. <coughs> from here out, from here on out, all the stirring will be done by hand. There will be no more no more blending. Uh, simply for the fact that once it gets so thick, your blender becomes useless. It, it doesn't stir the material because it's too thick so you you have to go to a whisk no matter what or a spoon or a ladle anything that's stainless steel that is not going to react with the lye because right now this is still very caustic um, it's not done completely reacting it has started the process but there's still uh, aqueous sodium hydroxide present so Stir a little bit. You don't want to stir too much. Uh, it, it, <laughs> it really comes down to a feel thing, an experience thing. <clears throat> because I, obviously at this point, the top of this batter is probably close to 200 degrees. It's 213 degrees. Um, so it is definitely at a point where water is going to be evaporating. And the more you stir, the more water is going to evaporate. The more water that you lose, the thicker that your mix is going to be. Now you can go back in and compensate, compensate for that at the end by putting more water in um, at the end. Or <clears throat> you can start with a higher percentage of your, uh, of your live solution. You, know, you can have more water at the beginning. <clears throat> Once you become comfortable with how your process works with your equipment, you, you know, you play around with those numbers. If you have an order that you need to do, that you need to get out in less than six weeks or less than eight weeks or less than, you know, less than five weeks, you know, you can reduce the amount of water. You know, the, the consequence of that is, is your batter will be, uh, your batter will be thicker at the end. So your, your pouring is not going to have that glass top. You know, it's not, you're not going to be able to do those nice wispy, uh, swirly designs. But, you know, it's, it's all a matter of give and take. <clears throat> Less water means you get your, pro or your product faster, ready to market faster, but you do lose the ability to do some of those designs. If you're doing a monochromatic color, a monochromatic bar, or, uh, or a, a loaf that has no color, then you know what? It doesn't make a difference. <clears throat> Another... <clears throat> Another trick, uh, or actually a tip, is to keep your sides knocked down. Because once you get to the point where this batter turns into soap, and you have batter that goes up on the sides, it will dry, and it will become soap. And it will not accept any color, it will not accept any uh, fragrance, scent, essential oil. So when it becomes soap, it is soap. It's kind of like the, uh, the old saying, once it becomes jello, it will always be jello. So we just try to keep the, the size not down. Right now we're we're not super close to that um, to that point yet, but we are getting closer to what we call our, our second volcano. This is the, the Vesuvius stage where we have to do very intense, constant stirring for oh three, four minutes. <clears throat> 
simply because the mix is there's, there's a lot of reactions going on right now and those reactions are causing heat and that heat is causing water to evaporate and there's only one way to go out and that's up and so it rises it'll push to push your batter up and then bubbles will form and if you are not paying attention if you are not stirring if you are not on top of your game <coughs> you will have a hot mess all over your your soaping area so it really hasn't started the the volcanoing the second volcanoing stage yet it's pretty close it's thinking about it um, but like I said you can control this to a certain degree by the amount of water that you put in that you start with the more water you, you start with the less uh, volatility you have and the, the temperature of the oils themselves so <clears throat> I guess therefore you, the temperature of your lye um, obviously when you are mixing your lye when you're mixing your sodium hydroxide into your water um, initially it's going to be the hottest once, it, once you get everything in and it just starts to uh, dissolve you know as it sits obviously it'll cool down a little bit so you know if you have your own tank where you are uh, you've got your lye already pre-mixed you know you can, you can bring it up to any, any temperature that you want if you're mixing it as you go then you will obviously need to wait and cool it down a bit or go, go in hot so <clears throat> Hot means a little bit more, a little more bubbling, a little more volcano. So this one wasn't bad at all. Now I want you to listen. You hear it's like a silky sticking. That tells me that all my volcanoing is done, and this batter is 90, 98, 99% done. We are almost, <clears throat> almost to that point where we are officially soaked. It's, 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 hard, it's hard to describe but once you've done it uh, enough times when you stir you'll hear just like air popping like whoa, whoa. but when you get to a point where it starts to sound like silky sticky silk I don't know is that a good way to describe your soap oh yeah we make soap and it's it's sticky like silk I, I'm not sure that that's I digress, <clears throat> but hopefully you can hear that, but you, you also see a change, a visual change. So now I definitely need to make sure my sides are down, knocked down, that's great. <clears throat> and then I said, I'll, I'll let this sit for a couple minutes because it's not completely done. I can, I can look at it and tell that it's not completely done. A real easy way to tell, you can get your, your, uh, your pH meter and you can check it out and test it and this and that. Or you can grab a spoon, take the back of the spoon, coat it, make sure you blow it. <laughs> make sure you cool it off because this, right now this is hot. We're running at 207 degrees on the top and the top is starting to crust a little bit. So you're an easy 220 on the, on the inside there. Take your spoon, coat the back of it, blow it off, let it cool off a little bit, tap your tongue. If, it, if, it, if, you, if you feel like a little buzz on your tongue, like you've got like a little battery on your tongue, it's not done yet. <clears throat> um, the stronger that buzz, the more lye is present. So the weaker that buzz, the less lye um, that's present and it's almost done and completely saponifying. If it's just hot, salty soap and you feel no, no, no buzz, then you know what, you're done. And then you can start doing whatever you need, it is that you need to do. <clears throat> right now, like I said, I'm going to let this sit for a minute. I'm going to start working on our, our, our additional additives. We've got some more ghost milk that we want to put in. We've got um, our, some of our super fats that we want to put in. I'm going to start getting my scents ready. So uh, hang tight and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. This honestly is uh, where things start jamming. This part's going to get real, real, real busy, real fast, real quick, real crazy. So here's what the overall process is what we're going to do. I'm going to add in my super fat. I'm going to strain it through here to make sure there's nothing in there. We like to use uh, unrefined cocoa butter as one of our super fats. And so sometimes, you know, you will have some of the bits of the natural cocoa hull in there. So we'll strain that out. We'll stir that in. Then we'll add some more, more of our additives, our goat milk. 
Um, we'll stir that in as well. <clears throat> then we'll add in our, our fragrance and our scents. And then from there we'll mix it all up. Then we're going to divide our batch into two different colors. We're going to have a base that's going to be um, soap batters, which will be a white at that point. Then we'll add in some different colors, pour on top, and then we'll do some designs. Nothing fancy, just a couple swirls. So like I said, this is where it's going to get real quick, uh, or real crazy, real quick. So just hang with us. <coughs> I like to have our super fat close to the same temperature as a soap batter so that way it is not um, it doesn't seize your batter it's real easy at this point to seize your batter and so that's not what you want to do um, with with our goat's milk uh, tonight we're adding it in at the end and I keep it chilled until the point of uh, to which I'm, I'm ready to use it because if I don't <clears throat> if I have it out at room temperature then it will scorch, the milk will start to scorch at temperatures above 184 degrees so if I have it chilled it will obviously take more to get it to that scorch, scorching temperature but like I said cold things can make your batter seize so you just have to be make sure you are stirring when you add it in because if you are, if you are not stirring when you add it in it will seize that batter that it lands on and that, that's, not, that's no good <clears throat> Alright, I'm going to switch whisks here, which will give me a better, a better stir. These are pretty thick with the spacing on, 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 that, on that whisk. They're good. It's good for general things, but when I'm trying to get something incorporated well, I like a little bit smaller spaces here. So we'll get that started. Spatula back, we're gonna need that. There we go. A little weird, a little awkward working at this angle. I'm used to hovering right above the mix and not being on the side of it, but hopefully you guys can see this. Alright. <clears throat> Knock the sides down. Scrape that off onto my whisk. Alright. I also have our scent ready to go. I like to pour our scent in right after I add our milk because extra liquid will help to um, reduce the, the heat as well. I mean, it's not a huge amount, but every little bit helps at this point. <clears throat> so I get that poured in. Slowly bring that. All right. a really good a really good scent so our lover's charm bar <clears throat> little sweet little spicy little pro, uh, playful it's good all right all right so getting ready to pour our base into the mold I'm not going to pour all of it, just going to pour a little bit. Uh, I think that's good there. That's a little heavy, that'll suffice for now. Knock it down. Coat the bottom of the mold. You don't have to, but this is what. This is how I'm doing it tonight. Doesn't really make a difference. We're going to make a swirl. So, stand by. Alright, got you at the coloring station. Uh, getting ready to pour some of the batter in here. Need to work relatively quickly. Uh, I think that'll be good. Yep, maybe just a tad bit more over here. We'll see how that works out. <clears throat> This is the part my wife loves. She's the creative genius behind things. I'm the left brain engineer. Everything has to be the same way every time. And soap making is it is about being repetitive in, in, in your recipes and your percentages. But 
when you come to the artistic portion of it, that's where my wife excels. She excels in so many things. Alright, <clears throat> I think today we're going to start with the pink first. Get that in. Get this stirred up. Normally I would um, I'd mix one color and then I pour it. But since I'm running solo on the camera today, I'll, I'll mix both colors and then I'll pour them. I'll move you over and then I'll pour pour them at the same time, not at the same time, one at a time. But normally, I think you figure out what I'm talking about. If not, well, that'll be all right. All right, that's done. <clears throat> Set that out the way for right now. Pot is still hot, remember that. Ah, let's see. Funny thing is, I used to weigh for these portions right here, I used to weigh them. Used to weigh the amount of batter I put in every time. My wife, she would just look at me like I was crazy and had three heads. And you know, I was like, honey, that's that's the way I roll. That's that's how, that's what I know. You take an engineer to an amusement park, they're not going to have fun. They're going to figure out how all the rides are built. What can I say? <clears throat> all right, I'm gonna move you over. This is probably the best angle. You're not going to see everything, but you'll see enough of it, hopefully. You know what? I'll switch it up. I'll pour from this side today. Oh, letting the hair down, living crazy. Pull it down a bit. Letting it all hang out. Pouring from the wrong side of the mold today. Whew. Next thing you know, we might try other people's silverware. There goes the spatula. That's all right. We would do without it. All right. <clears throat> I can't do that left-handed. Scrape the bowl out, or if you if you don't want to, you can save that for a nice little scrap. We've got lots of scraps around the house. We will have soap until until the cows come home. All right, old habits die hard. Going to the right end this time. A little bit there. You would think, as many times as I've done this, I would remember to move the pot out of the way so I don't have that problem, but inevitably I always leave it there. Alright, that one's done. <coughs> now. This, this is where you get the hairy grunt as I try to pour the rest of this because this is kind of heavy. That's the easy part. The mold right there in front of you, that's the easy one. So when you have to, so when you have to do this, the things start to, this is like a 40 quart pot. And we started with 16 pounds of oil, so we had about 25 pounds of batter in here once it was all said and done, give or take. So, it's not the lightest thing in the world, that's for sure. Alright. great thing about this is, you know what, 
make it any way you want. I used to, I used to sweat about it. Oh, it's got to be this way, it's got to be that way. And, you know, I still do try to um, repeat my pattern and colors and but learn to have more fun with it. Because if, I, if I'm not having fun, then why in the world am I doing it? All right, hold your ears. Flatten it down a little bit. <clears throat> Took this, I think this was uh, an eighth inch uh, stainless steel rod from the hardware store. It, took this, I think it was an eighth inch stainless steel rod that we got from the hardware store. We were originally doing smaller molds and so bent it to fit that mold so it was uh, a perfect hanger but obviously we've made bigger molds but it still works. So now we're just going to do a little swirl. Swirl as little or as much as you, as you like. Boom. Come down here, do this part, boom, give it a tap, you're done, move to the next one, swirl, up and down, around, sideways, however you want to do it. Don't want to swirl too much, because then you'll wind up with, what do they call that, a suicide Kool-Aid, I don't like that name, you'll wind up with something that looks brown because you've mixed everything together. So. Tap again, tap again, and we're done. This is this is how we do it. Um, nothing fancy, nothing special. This is our process. We use a lot of different processes when we make soap. Um, we can do a hot process, we can do a cold process, we can do a hot, uh, uh, sorry, cold process, oven process, you know, whatever. You know, it all comes about, it all comes down to the ingredients that you use and how much love that you put into it. If you're using quality ingredients, you're gonna get an awesome soap. If you're not using the best, and you know what? The, the, end, the, end, the end product uh, reflects that. But that's not to say <clears throat> that, well, I'm going to have to do all olive oil because olive oil is the king of oils. You know what? Olive oil is a great, is a great oil. But you know what? There are other oils that bring comparable um, properties and char characteristics to your soap. You have to look at your market. You have to look at uh, potential allergies, you know, and, and make either make something geared toward your, your targeted market or just make something that you enjoy making. You know what, because there's, there's a point in time that if you're not enjoying it, then then we shouldn't be doing it. But at the same time, if you're trying to do it to make a profit, then you know you have to balance those two. So um, what we'll do is we'll let this, we'll let this set up overnight. Really, uh, it needs to sit 12 hours before I can cut it. I can probably even cut it a little bit uh, sooner than that. It, uh, that um, the time it takes in which to, to uh, the time, how long it takes before you can cut it is dependent upon obviously humidity, evaporation rate, but how much moisture, how much, how much liquid that you started with in the beginning. Less liquid means faster cutting time. But, you know, we're still much, much, much faster than the cold process. Cold process, you really can't cut if you're doing a loaf until maybe 24 hours later, maybe 36 hours later, <laughs> maybe, maybe a full two or three days, depending upon what oils you're using. A lot of those softer oils will take a little bit more time um, to set up. But we will cut this in about 12 hours. Uh, and then we'll, we'll put it on a rack to cure. And, you know, it'll be, I mean, it's ready to use right now. Like, I, I will take these scrapings off of this bowl here and um, this is this is soap this is good to go so obviously it's got a lot of moisture in it so it's going to dissolve much faster uh, the more moisture that evaporates the harder the soap will be the longer that it will last and the more um, smooth it will be but this is ready to go you know I've taken my gloves off and you know I have no fear no worry of, of being burned by excess lye because I know our recipe works. I know that our recipe um, has a proper oil to lye ratio so that all the, eye, or the lye will have been saponified and all the oils will be as saponified except for our super fat. So um, tomorrow we'll cut it and, uh, and I'll show you what the end result is. Um, maybe if you're interested 
in, in watching us cut. I mean, I don't know how exciting is watching somebody cut soap. But maybe, you know, we didn't know how to do it <clears throat> when we first started. So maybe maybe we'll include that in there. So that way if somebody's like, well, man, how do I cut soap? You know, I'm not real sure. Do I take a knife? Well, yeah, you can do that. Um, you know, I'll show you our cutter. You know, it's a nice, a nice product that we ordered off of the Internet from a gentleman on uh, the next day over. It makes good, good quality. Um, items, very good craftsmanship, but maybe we'll show you how to cut it, and then we'll show you what the, the swirl looks like, I'll probably find the best piece out of all of these bars, so that way you can see, like, oh wow, this is awesome, this guy did a really good job, when really it was just, you know, one out of, out of, out of a million, no, but we'll, we'll show you, um, we'll show you, we'll show you all the bars, you know what, it's like Christmas, it's like opening a present, uh, everyone's going to be a little bit different, and that's, and that's what's great about it, so thanks for watching with us guys. All right, here we are. It's the next day. It's been about oh, maybe 13 hours since we've uh, poured the uh, poured the soap, and so it is now fully cured. Uh, sorry, not fully cured, but it is hard enough that we can go ahead and cut it. So let's go ahead and get that done. This was the the cutter that I was talking about last night. We ordered it off of uh, I think it was Etsy. One of the gentlemen. I think his name is Bud Hafner. Makes really good products. So. Um, if you're in the market for a cutter, we highly recommend it because it has lasted us well. What I like to do to start off is I like to trim the edges just so we get everything nice and square. So I'll, I'll bring this over. Uh, here we go. We're trying to, trying to work through the bottom side of the camera. We'll make sure everything's nice and squared up. And we'll just cut the end piece off. That's what the end piece looks like. The end pieces usually aren't that fabulous, but you know what? It's still rock solid soap. The great thing about this cutter is we can cut multiple bars at one time and they're all going to be consistent. They're all going to be the same size. Don't have to worry about um, misshapen bars because we are eyeballing it but you know what that is that's a market you know it, that's definitely a handcrafted homemade look so people know that it's not made by a machine all right let's take a look there's a couple pieces there <clears throat> this one had a lot of stirring on it so there we go. That's a better, a better angle for you. We've got more pieces here. So this is what the the, the finished final product looks like. Uh, this is loaf one of the two that we made last night. Once we get this all cut, we'll we'll clean the edges of it. Then we'll set it up uh, on our curing rack and. It'll sit there until it's cured. We'll take we'll take weekly measurements of the weight, so that way we can see how much uh, how much how much mass it has lost. And then once it hits a certain percentage point, then we'll know it's done. So it's just like all those other videos where everyone's showing you all the pieces of soap one at a time up close, but more pieces. We uh, we thank you guys for. Hanging with us, we know it's been a long process. Um, that was a really good one. Have to look at that one. But uh, this is how we do it. You know, I know not everybody's going to agree with how we do it, and that's fine. Um, if everybody agreed on everything, then the world would be pretty boring because we'd all be doing the same thing the same way. So um, this is by no means a definitive guide, but this is how we do it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks.